Hello and welcome to the TF1 show. I am Tinas Ferreira, your host and vital electrolytes that power your body through the marathon that is the world of Formula One. Now today we will be discussing what happened uh, throughout the Canadian Grand Prix weekend and I think we will definitely start off by discussing the main determining factor in today's race results. Now let's get into it. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, I have a lot to say, so for those who didn't watch the race... You know, Sebastian Vettel was in front the whole time. Uh, Hamilton was quite close behind uh, uh, throughout, you know, especially in the sort of second half of the race. Hamilton was really pushing Vettel hard, being, you know, within a second or so of each other. And Vettel made a mistake. Uh, he didn't make the corner. He sort of drove across the grass, across the corner and rejoined the track, bounced a bit and had a bit of a, you know, out of control moment as he rejoined the track. Hamilton saw his opportunity and tried to pass him on the outside, but, you know, there just wasn't enough room and Hamilton was therefore squeezed a bit against the wall with him then deciding to back out and Vettel maintaining the lead. Now, I think, obviously, there's the, this video of this incident is is all over, the, all over the internet and I think if you go look for it on Twitter, on Facebook or on Instagram, you're going to find it without any difficulty and then I think the main fallout from this then obviously was the fact that Vettel received a five-second time penalty by the stewards. So the stewards, obviously the people that, you know, basically enforce the rules during the race and during the whole race weekend. And they decided that Vettel will have five seconds added to his race time at the end, therefore effectively giving Hamilton the race victory since Hamilton was able to stay, you know, with, to within at least five seconds from from Vettel right up until the end. So obviously an extremely controversial decision by the stewards, and there was outrage. There was picks. There were pitchforks. You know, people were threatening to boycott Formula One. I, I mean, it was chaos off the race, and Vettel was actually very funny, and he was very upset, obviously. But you know, just the drama afterwards was extremely entertaining to watch, and I think. Let's maybe take a step back before we actually before I tell you all what my opinion is on on what they were supposed to do and maybe read the piece of the rules or the piece of the regulation that the stewards used to justify the fact uh, or justify the decision to give Sebastian Vettel a five second time penalty and it basically goes like this it says should a car leave the track for any reason and without prejudice to the bottom regulation below. The driver may re-enter the track. And now this is the important bit. However, this may only be done when it is safe to do so and without gaining any advantage. Now, I think what the stewards were then arguing is saying that given that Hamilton had to back out, you know, after Vettel was squeezing him against the wall after Vettel re-entered the track, the stewards obviously took the hard stance and said that Vettel did not technically re-enter the track uh, when it was safe to do so, and he should have allowed, I guess, I don't really know how I was supposed to do this, but he should have allowed Hamilton more room, or he should have been less aggressive with his re-entry onto the track. Now, personally, I don't agree with the penalty. I don't think the penalty should have been applied. Um, I guess within that co absolute complete letter of the regulations, um, the stewards that applied correctly but the thing is in all cases and I think you know it doesn't matter where you sort of apply rules or regulations context is a very very important determining factor as to whether the um, punishment should eventually be applied and I don't think the stewards here considered the context because personally if you look at the video Vettel you know he made a mistake he ran off track he was just going too fast I mean he drove straight back onto the track he, his tires were obviously covered in grass. He didn't have the grip. He had an oversteering moment, but never did it seem like Vettel could have kept more to the left than what he what he ended up doing. So that's why I'm saying I really don't understand what the stewards did here because I don't think there was any intent from Vettel 
to actually try and squeeze Hamilton out of, of the wall here. Um, well, I guess it's similar to what Hamilton, I guess, did to Ricciardo. And someone on Facebook pointed this out to me directly after the race where, again, well, in this situation, it was actually Hamilton in front that cut the corner and then, you know, made the second half of the chicane and then, again, squeezed Ricciardo against the wall. And Hamilton wasn't punished for for that one. But uh, as I did mention on Facebook, I don't necessarily agree that the situation is completely similar. And I will share the, the video of the hamilton Ricciardo incident uh, in Monaco on my Twitter account for your perusal if you want to see what I'm talking about. Now, Hamilton's take on all of this is quite simple. I think he thinks the outcome of the day is obviously correct since, according to him, he pressured Vettel into making the mistake in the first place and that hence Vettel deserved to lose out and Hamilton deserved to win the race since Vettel made a mistake and he didn't make a mistake. But I think, you know, while that may be true, Vettel didn't enter or come back onto the track in an incorrect fashion according to me or I don't think he could have done it differently and yeah he did end up not losing the position was he supposed to lose the position in that situation I'm not sure I don't think we can conclusively say that he he had to lose the position necessarily because his mistake you know he was sufficiently hampered by the mistake I mean Hamilton was technically a lot closer after Vettel rejoined the track so you know, Hamilton gained an advantage there, not Vettel necessarily. So, yeah, an interesting one. And uh, Vettel was obviously furious and he was extremely petty afterwards, which I enjoyed a lot. I mean, he even moved the boards indicating the positions uh, that the cars finished uh, the cars finished in back to where his car was supposed to stand. So he basically swapped the number one and number two boards from Hamilton's car to his car. And I also found it hilarious that poor Charles Leclerc was just standing around looking like a deer in headlights the whole time because I don't think he really knew what was going on. So, yeah, just sort of an hilarious aftermath, I guess. And, you know, I think my last observation on this would just be that, interestingly, the explosion of reaction afterwards at least still shows that Formula 1 is a much-loved sport. And I can say that this controversy is definitely going to get into the media tomorrow. And uh, there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? Right? So, yeah, let's, let's see what, what comes of uh, all of this, all of this drama. Let's quickly talk now about, you know, just each of the teams, how they did, give a quick recap of qualifying and, and what happened in the race, you know, other than the, you know, the main, the main news story, I guess. So for Mercedes, from Mercedes perspective, a good race overall for Hamilton. I mean, he was pressuring Vettel during the whole race and he was, I think, across the whole race distance, probably the fastest car since Vettel just wasn't able to pull away from him at any stage. I think, you know, in the first stint on the first set of tyres, Vettel was able to pull a slight gap, but never really to an extent where I think he could get comfortable. So I think Hamilton, again, did his job and similarly to Bahrain, he did pressure Vettel into making a mistake and then obviously the fallout from that mistake was massive and not necessarily correct but Vettel made the mistake. If Vettel didn't make the mistake we wouldn't have we wouldn't be having this discussion I guess. And um you know again also I guess you can give some kudos to Hamilton for after the the difficulties that he had you know he had the crash in in free practice 2 and then he had some hydraulic problem that Mercedes picked up uh, end of yesterday evening with his mechanics having to, you know, basically find the problem and put together the whole car this morning just before the race. And I think we can congratulate those Mercedes mechanics for being able to do that because I think that must have been an extremely stressful situation. Now, in terms of qualifying, a Ferrari, they were too fast on the straights. So they, that's basically where the, where the, the qualifying battle there was lost. Uh, it sounded like Merck was struggling with, you know, developing its engine over the course of this year. So I think the power upgrade wasn't as big as what they expected. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting on all of the remaining power circuits. I think, you know, if you are a Ferrari fan or if you're part of the Tifosi, better go buy a ticket for Monza because Ferrari is going to have a chance there, I think. It's going to be really fascinating to see. Now, Valtteri Bottas, um, I think it's back to old Bottas for, for now, for this weekend, since, you know, he messed up in Q3. He just had two very scruffy laps, and he ended up starting in, in sixth, 
which obviously is not where that car is supposed to be starting from. He had a good recovery to get back up to P4, but I think he's going to be very disappointed with his efforts. And I think Hamilton now truly has the ascendancy in, you know, even the inter-team battle now because he is he's streaking ahead with his uh, 25 points that he managed to get versus Bottas's 12. Now Ferrari. Was this a rare chance of victory for them? I do think so. Um, I think obviously their engine power contributed massively to firstly Sebastian Vettel getting pole position and then to Vettel being able to hold off Hamilton throughout the race, you know, regardless of the actual outcome. Although I have to say, you know, the Ferrari did look better in the type in, in the corners as well. I, I guess most of them are chicane, so maybe not the best indicator of all around, you know, downforce and cornering stability. Mercedes were they were still quicker. I mean, we we, we all saw that, but Ferrari did a good job, I think, this week with the second and the third place. They, I guess they can't be too too distraught, but the win was obviously in their hands, and I think it was it was stolen from them. I think to a large extent, Vettel, you know, what a nice return to form for him. He that quality lap of him was was incredible and reminiscent of his of his peak power days back at Red Bull, where he can just pull out an incredible lap and put that car in pole position. Charles Leclerc struggled quite a bit in qualifying. Uh, he sort of faded throughout where he was matching Hamilton and Vettel in the first part and then second part was starting to drop off and then third part it was nowhere near. And he mentioned that, you know, he, he's still trying to figure out how to set up his car for Q3 specifically where he said he didn't take account of, you know, how the track actually changed during you know the the actual progress of qualifying so you know interesting observation and let's see if he can address that for the next race now i've already discussed the penalty um ferrari actually reg- you know regardless of of the penalty they did well with Vettel's strategy they didn't make any mistakes so good for them but they were again mystifying with leclerc's strategy i like they left him out for three or four random laps allowed Vettel and Hamilton to pull a massive gap on him and then decided, oh, wait, no, he actually it makes no sense for him to run long and then pitted him and then, yeah, just relegated him to third place. And I think, you know, if they'd pitted Leclerc even the same lap as, as Hamilton, they could have made Hamilton's life a lot more difficult later on in the race. I mean, Leclerc had very good pace in the last few laps. And, uh, you know, if, if Hamilton was harried from behind a bit more, it probably would have relieved some of the pressure from Vettel if they used the same strategies. So, yeah, a bit of a head-scratcher there from Ferrari, but I guess the second and the third place is still the solid result. Red Bull Racing, Verstappen got unlucky in qualifying with Magnussen's crash. Um, you know, he started in 11th, but with the penalties that, was, that were applied after qualifying, he started in 9th. You know, he did well to finish where he did. Uh, Red Bull, they were a, b- a bit nowhere this week. And Verstappen as well. I mean, it's probably not, not his greatest performance this week. I mean, he did okay. He didn't do anything wrong necessarily. But yeah, just not one of his better race weekends. And it's probably he'll want to come back strong in France. And now I guess we have to speak about poor Pierre Gasly. Uh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. So Gasly started in fifth. He was out-qualified by Daniel Ricciardo in his Renault, which is already a bit of a you know an interesting dynamic. And then he ended eighth in the race. Now that's definitely not the result he would have wanted, especially given that you know Gasly started in fifth and Verstappen, his teammate, started in ninth, and Verstappen ended up in fifth and Gasly ended up in eighth. So that in itself is definitely not a result he's going to be happy with. You know, Red Bull, I guess, did make mess up a bit by putting him into traffic after his pit stop, and he was basically stuck behind um, Lance Stroll's Force India, who was faster on the straight, so he just could never overtake him, which was, I guess, uh, disappointing for Gasly. But just the results, he needs to put in one good result at some stage because Daniel Kvyat again put in a brilliant performance in the Toro Rosso, and I just don't think things are looking good for Pierre Gasly. Hopefully, his home race is in France in two weeks' time. So, yeah, it's things are starting to look a bit dire. I'm not going to lie. Okay, let's quickly talk about the rest. The rest, Formula 1.5 now. 
great job by Daniel Ricciardo. He was fourth in qualifying, which I feel is an incredible achievement. You know, I know that Verstappen didn't make it and Bottas made a lot of mistakes, but putting that Renault in fourth place uh, on Saturday is really a really good achievement. And then backing that up with the sixth position in the race is an excellent result by Renault, uh, especially considering that Nico Hülkenberg was able to manage seventh as well. So a really good haul of points there for Renault. And uh, quite interestingly, I think that teammate's uh, relationship is going to start heating up a bit since uh, Hülkenberg was on a much faster tire strategy uh, at the end of the race, but Red Bull, uh, Red Bull, apologies, Renault, told him to hold station and not to try and overtake uh, Ricciardo. Hülkenberg was not pleased by that order, but I think on balance, it made sense for Renault to say, listen, we get it, we're going to get good points Let's not threaten the results by fighting with each other now and potentially ruining all of our hard work and our, our wonderful achievements. So, yeah, I think that's the right call. Lance Stroll, I guess we need to say well done in the race. And I, we definitely need to say not very well done at all in qualifying. He went out in Q1 again. I guess, you know, it's his home race. He got a point. We can applaud him. It was one of his better performances. I think if he can sort out his problems in qualifying, he can, he's actually quite decent uh, in the races themselves. But yeah, he needs to sort out whatever's going on with his one lap pace because I can't remember. I think it's 11 consecutive races that is now finished that he fell out in, that he's fell out, fallen out in the first part of qualifying. And yeah, that's just not something you want uh, on your name. All right, McLaren, I think they'll be disappointed. Uh, Science got unlucky again with, uh, you know, one of those visor tear-off strips that apparently um, got into one of his air ducts. I'm not sure if it's one of his brake cooling ducts or in, in the, air, the air box, but that necessitated a, a very, very early pit stop for him. To put him on hard tires and, you know, his hard tires, they just weren't able to hold out right up until the very end, getting overtaken by... By, by Stroll and by uh, Kvyat you know, in the last few laps. He drove a solid race, qualified decently well. But uh, yeah, I guess McLaren probably would have wanted more. Uh, Landon Norris had a reliability issue early on. So yeah, I mean, what can you say? Sorry. Haas, I literally didn't see Grosjean once. Don't know what happened to him. Don't know, you know, anything about his race. Didn't hear him. He complained once on the radio, but, you know, what's new? Magnussen was being a complete pain. He was, you know, saying on the radio that this is the absolute worst car that has ever driven in his life. Completely forgetting that he crashed that car uh, in qualifying yesterday. And basically his engineers had to work through the night to replace the whole chassis replace basically all of the bits in that car for him to be able to race and then for him to come on the radio and and you know just slap them in the face by saying that you know his car is unacceptable and i don't know what and gunter steiner uh, you know after that came back and promptly put him in his place which i think all of us appreciated so thank you so much gunter steiner for for um, managing that prima donna a great effort by daniel kvyat to finish in the points uh, his stock is rising, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Pierre Gasly, as I've mentioned now, and I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but you better watch out. Daniel Kivet is coming for him, and then Alexander Albon hot on his heels, even though Albon uh, had a bit of a weaker race today. Now, can we just applaud George Russell for finishing in front of one entire Kevin Magnussen today? What a great effort from him. And Williams must be so excited to not be the last two cars on the road. Uh, Kubica was the last car on the road, so not really anything I can say there. And then lastly, Saba was so nondescript during this race, I literally have nothing to say. Cool. Let's move on to our traditional award ceremony for the Canadian Grand Prix. And firstly, the Pasta Maldonado Award for the most dunderheaded deed will have to go, I'm sorry, to the stewards because they ruined a brilliant race with about 10 laps to go. And although the drama afterwards was excellent to watch, I don't think uh, it justified what they did. You know, they followed the letter of the law, I guess, but you need to look at the context. And I don't think what they did there was the smart or the correct decision. Now, secondly, the Lewis Hamilton hashtag blessed award will have to go to its namesake, Mr. Lewis Hamilton. 
He drove brilliantly, but he got lucky today. I think there's no two ways about it. He did force Vettel into making the mistake, but I think in in a completely fair and just world, he would have ha- uh, had to be happy with second today. But, you know, still a good job by him, and I think he'll be pleased to be, uh, you know, put some more daylight between himself and his teammates. And thirdly, the Nico Hülkenberg Podium Award for Unluckiest Driver during the weekend uh, there are a few, you know, potential candidates. I guess you could say Pierre Gasly for getting stuck behind Lance Stroll. You know, that was quite unlucky. Um, you know, Leclerc's strategy again, Ferrari effectively banishing him to third place early on. But I have to, I think, say, and I think we all need to agree that the winner, or I guess the loser of this award, will have to go to Sebastian Vettel for that penalty. Vettel really did a good job this weekend. I mean, he was flawless, except for that one mistake that then led him to leave the track. But, you know, he he got a second out of it, and I think he he will feel robbed. And I think he, he should probably feel robbed. But, you know, two weeks in two weeks' time, we're all back for the French Grand Prix. So, you know, he, he's just going to have to put it behind him, and Ferrari needs to come back stronger than ever. So, in summary... The first 60 or so laps of the Canadian Grand Prix was brilliant. Uh, Hamilton was sitting on Vettel's gearbox and pushing him lap after lap, so it was really good to see. You know, Vettel did make the mistake, but what happened thereafter was not the correct outcome, even though we'll probably be talking about this for a while still. So I guess, as always, there's much to ponder. Will they finally remove Lance Stroll's car from the pit lane you know the car's just been sitting there the whole race every time someone went into the pits you just see that horrible stricken orange mclaren sitting there don't know what that was about uh will leclerc finally figure out his qualifying problems will Vettel be able to recover physically spiritually and emotionally for the next race in france and um yeah i guess we'll have to wait and see but alas that's it for today If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate, review, comment and subscribe. My deep baritone tones will be back to entertain you next week. But in the meantime, please follow me on Twitter where my handle is at TF1Show and on Instagram where my handle is at the TF1Show for my thoughts every day. I'll see you next week.